Hello and welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide Part 14. Today is Kerry and Manor. And if this is the first time you've watched any of these guides, then we recommend you watch the video. Link in the description below if you have any tips for yourself. Stick them in the tips comments so other people can see them. But otherwise, we've put on Blood Flame Blade and we are running towards this little bit here. And you can kind of see fingers uh, popping out the ground. And what the plan was supposed to be is that you can um, go around the fingers and then hit them, and then the hand should do this, like, rolling about, I'm in pain, fire animation, but actually it just uh, grabbed us. So uh, try and uh, try and just be careful. And, um, yeah, Blood Flame Blade, particularly great in this area because the hands do that. Um, I help, I'm on fire animation, and if they're doing that, that means they're not attacking you. So um, big up Blood Flame Blade. If anybody got me, Blood Flame Blade got me. And then here's the <laughs> Blintstone Craftsman's cookbook. Yeah, Carrier Manor's got to be a lot of, um, as we said for the Academy Gate Town, it's got to be a lot of run from point A to B to C to D and pick up the items along the way. So, um, I'm not sure why so, you, uh, oh yeah, you quit yeah. out there to uh, allow us to fast travel back to the start of the area. And yeah. then just popping the fire arrows on, because if you've got any left, the fire arrows, since they deal fire damage, will also trigger the flailing about help me i'm on fire animation uh which is useful I especially since you have these guys who ambush you if you have any fire pots as well you could lob them at them so that's pretty good so there is a legitimate use for some fire pots if you're able to craft any which you should be able to the rest they're quite abundant and um like the stuff that you to, to make them now, for whatever reason, I wasn't using Ground Slam, which is actually uh, also very good. I was kind of extremely focused on the uh, Blood Flame Blade method, but actually Ground Slam will pancake the hands, and um, that's pretty good, so just remember that. Okay, so we picked a Smith and Stone up off the edge of the fountain, and towards this archway, but we're not going to go through it yet, there's Golden Rune 4. Now, if you take the right, or looking east, there's a gap in between these two towers. So we're going to go in between, in back there, and then there's a Scarab, which drops Carrion Piercer, which I think is a spell that um, swings a big sword. And then there's the Ice Crest Shield as well. Yeah, both pretty good. Carrion Piercer is something that Moongrim could have used on you earlier, so that was the NPC in Ray Lucaria. Um, it sure, makes sure. this big magical sword and it stabs straight forward, and the Ice Crest Shield's pretty good as well. Decent resistances. So we're only going to fight the hands when it's strictly necessary. Um, and there's some rhymed crystal buds floating about. This is, uh, I guess, left off the path, but then we're just going to head back onto the path. Uh, just before, but just before we go through that second archway, just taking a little detour, then we're back onto the hill, I suppose. And then we're yeah, just, just up. progressing up it. Um, largely ignoring the enemies. If it's not in our way, we don't need to fight it. Um, saying that, though, there is a benefit to fighting the hands, and that is that they will drop somber stones of varying rarities depending on where you are through the game. So these ones, I think, the small ones drop uh, somber ones, and the big ones drop somber twos. But grabbing yeah, a smithing stone, so. regular smithing stone, fall from the altar there, and then grabbing the next grace. Aye, aye. So this area is one of the smaller areas in the game, but I feel like it did uh, deserve its own part just to kind of split things up. Now, these blue guys, don't bother fighting them. We're just going to run straight past them. Um, there's just kind of no need, honestly. There's also, like, some... What this appears to be, like, a sort of trap thing, like a bouncing Betty in, in this area. Like, if you run over, it kind of shoots up or something. I feel like I'm... Was I seeing that correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're a really ineffectual trap. Just yeah. run out, just run over them and ignore them, basically. So, so now we're jumping onto, onto these the... roofs here. Aye, so this um, is essentially the towers that we ran between to get that scarab. So we're jumping onto the roofs down here, and now there is the Sword of Night and Flame, which is a legendary weapon, so that's cool. Um, it was also absolutely fucked in the early patch of uh, of this game. We'd probably have went, went, we'd have probably used that weapon, actually, uh, before everything got patched. Still pretty good. To though. be honest... Yeah, you still could. I mean, both the Ashes of War are still usable. They're just not as good as they once were. So we uh, we warped back to the Grace that was just before this bit, and now we're going the other way, 
so we went the way that went, led to the towers. Now we're going the other direction and we're just running just straight past everything, straight up here and onto the lift. Uh, now I think what we do is we actually run up here, grab the next grace and then go back down the lift. And then that way we can just walk back to this grace once we're done doing the thing um, that we just went past. But obviously, so if we die, we're going to come back here. So it's just a little bit better. And it gives you an opportunity to get your flasks back before you have to go to the uh, little section of rooftops that you need to make a jump to get to. Aye, aye. Because um, that's, yeah, that's what we're doing next. So um, we went back to the last grace. We went over the, I guess, the ramparts or whatever. But we did pass this part, um, and this is kind of off the ramparts, and you can just jump over and onto here, except you're not going to do that. What you're going to do is this instead, and you're going to aim your jump better and actually land on the fucking platform. <laughs> yeah, general advice, look before you leap. Don't just jump off into the void. It's a bad idea. Yeah, that actually applies to quite a lot of things, seemingly. But now we're on this next rampart, we're just going to take the beaten path forward. Um... I don't know what I was looking for there, but I. Uh, so in this kind of more open courtyard area, there's a couple little hands, but fuck them. And then there's a Rumi. A uh, great weapon. It's a whip, but it's uh, charged heavy attacks have a stab, so it's a whip with thrusting damage. Um, just cool. ignore this, by the way. Just run straight past it. Yeah, it's, we're not fighting. It's not going to hurt here. you. No. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't happening, bro. And then we get a, smith a somber Smith and Stone 3. And that is it for that rampart section. It's kind of... So, whatever. But this is why we can just warp straight back here instead. So, heading back along the beaten path. And now there is some wolves in this area. And another golden seed. So that's pretty cool. We're going to grab that. Uh, uh, so these far, wolves are actually a little bigger than the normal wolves. Because these are the dire wolves that the Albanoric archers can ride. And oh. funnily enough, if you summon, or if you were to use, say, Light Sheet Engine or something to summon Lieutenant the Albanoric, the Spirit Ash we have, in this area, she can actually mount them. There is an animation yes. for that. Now, um, cool. we've not actually discovered any enemies yet that have any drops, so that's why I've not mentioned anything. Um, but yeah, we're just running onto this bit of courtyard, and there's going to be a bit of a weird edit coming up. So what you're going to want to do is shoot these guys first with a bow. Um, because we, in fact, have to kill that troll uh, to get his weapon. But trying to fight the troll plus these guys ain't happening. All right? So, yeah, we're just going to use the bow to its fullest capability. We highly recommend you have a bow, at least of some sort on you, just for dealing with this kind of shite. So these it... are more of those Lazuli sorcerers? Um, yes. The ones with the sword and shield. They can drop the sword. They cannot drop the shield, but we did pick that up in this area. They can drop the robe, the gauntlets, and the boots of the same armor set. Well, apparently they do only drop the robe. Apparently. but Oh, um, is that so? I thought they could drop the gloves and boots as well. Uh, well, according to, according to the wiki, no. And I ain't fucking testing it, so... <laughs> so, now we've... Uh, I think we took a ladder up here. And now we're going to jump over here, and now uh, you could just use a bunch of arrows and shoot the troll guy, but actually it's a pain in the arse doing that. It's kind of more hassle than it's worth, if I'm being entirely honest. So we're just going to use ground slam, and no matter what build you're using, you're just going to use ground slam, because it's just going to put this guy on his arse, and then you can uh, continue to do whatever it was your build normally does to him. Uh, yeah, thank God for ground slam. Now, this troll guy seems to always drop his troll knight sword. Um, so that's kind of cool. On the first kill, that is. You can't get one every time you uh, kill him. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to jump over funny this as that would bit. be. And then we're just going to keep dropping down here. And then there's another smith and stone four, which is uh, quite hidden smith and stone four, actually. Uh, but definitely worth getting because smith and stone fours are based and cool. Now, heading up the stairs, I think there's some pages on here, and I think, I think this is the first time other than... I think they've only shown up a couple other times. Uh, but yeah, the pages can drop their armor set, so that's the hood, the garb, the trousers, and they can also drop the red brand short bow, even though they're using a, a crossbow. Apparently they don't drop their weapons, so I don't know what the deal is. I, th I think there's a page that uses the red brand short bow, and that's the one that drops it, but otherwise I don't think these guys drop their 
crossbow or air stock or something. I don't think no, they drop No, they can't. They can all drop the red burn shortbow. Doesn't matter where they are. Ah, weird. Um, I've I've had it drop on Altus. I've had it drop on the Weeping Peninsula. I've had it drop from these guys. It's quite a common drop, seemingly. I've had it drop a bunch of times, and I've never used it. So pages are actually quite tough, as you saw. Uh, now we are we going to do this just now? Or yeah, we we'll double back for the section um, down the cliff face. All right, cool. Well, when it comes to the next boss, which I can't remember the name of. Loretta. Thank Royal you. Loretta. So we're just going to do our normal buffs. We're going to take our physic. We're going to put golden fowl on. We're going to buff our weapon. And then we are going to summon the imps. Now, presumably, you can't bleed this enemy. So that's fine. But... No, you cannot. Uh, lightning armament is going to be good. And ground slam should also be good. If you can hit, hit her with the ground slam, that should uh, kind of stagger her. She has one of the the horse, the big horse enemies that aren't the black riders, and as a result, they do this stagger animation quite a lot. Actually, they're quite susceptible to uh, high poise damage weapons. So getting your arse in on her will get some staggers in. And um, sadly, I suppose this isn't a great use of the imps. This is probably a, a, a different. Um, a different spirit ash may be better than the imps in this particular case because they're not doing a whole bunch of damage to her. But they are splitting aggro, so you know they, put, they are kind of putting the work in in that sense. Honestly, Loretta not very hard. Uh, does do quite a lot of magic damage as you can see. So you can put on the the magic damage defense uh, talisman if you're struggling. But otherwise, uh, again, just high poise, ground slam, staggers. And you get Loretta's Great Bow and uh, the, the, Ash, the Loretta's Ash of War thing. Now, here's a different method for beating Loretta if you're inexplicably struggling. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to activate Loretta. Then you're going to run up these stairs and then you're going to go into this corner. Now, bear in mind, this might at some point get patched, but then you can quit out the game and then come back in, and Loretta will be there, and we'll just let you hit her without uh, starting her aggro. So essentially, the uh, the couple of minutes where we were describing how to fight Loretta, pointless. Completely pointless. Just do this every time. Unless it gets patched. In which case, I don't know, suffer, I guess. As you saw there, Aslam done a big stagger on her. Uh, you'll come to realise that uh, Lion's Claw is extremely good against enemies like this, so the Tree Sentinel and Loretta. Um, but otherwise, that is Loretta. Honestly, pretty simple. There's a lot of bosses in this game that really don't need a lot of explanation, I will say. Uh, so, just hitting her with an ass slam, spreading the aggro, buff your weapon, you're going to be alright. And at that point, we leveled up our Endurance to 36, I think. And now we're just doubling back, and now we're going to go through this little uh, doorway here. And this leads to kind of like a descent down the cliff face. But obviously it's a lovely platforming section, so just be prepared to fall to your death. But once you get down to the bottom, you'll take a little bit of damage, so just make sure you're not on very low HP for whatever reason. I mean, there was another platform you could have landed on, but let's ignore that. Oh, it was? Yeah, okay, we will be ignoring that. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, As hi. with the uh, sections earlier in the game as well, where the pots show up, generally you'll find either a crack pot or a ritual pot or some combination of the two. And there we just picked up another crack pot, so that's another firebomb if you want one. That's another sleep pot if you need them. Uh Generally good to have. There's a finite number of them, so it's worth picking them all up. And again, the pots work like your your um, Flask of Crimson Tears and stuff. They will reset uh, on rest at a grace. But yeah, so uh, picking up a Smith and Stone 3 in the little graveyard bit. Honestly, you don't need to fight the pots here. You're not really going to get a lot out of it. But otherwise, we're just going to descend the cliff face, and this lets us get to this next last part of the ramparts, which is actually... I think this was something... So there, there we got Carrying Grandeur. Oh shit, that wasn't the ramparts, actually. That was um, one of the archways that we went over. Uh, the bit for the ramparts is later on. Never mind. But aye, back to round table hold, 
And we are going to probably upgrade our weapon now. Now, I think carrying grandeur is good, question mark? It is, yeah. It does very respectable stance damage, does pure magic damage, has respectable range. The only issue I have with it is it's quite slow. It takes a long time to fully charge up and hit with. But I think, if I remember, if I remember correctly, it's the single hardest hitting Ash of War in the game because you can boost it with so many things. Hmm, cool. So back to Loretta's boss room after we upgrade our katana. Apparently, if you've done everything we've been doing, you should be able to upgrade your katana another two times. And now we're on to the Smith and Stone 5 level of upgrades for the katana. Uh, and that also now means that we can upgrade the offhand katana more if you so choose, which you probably will. Now, heading down this way, there is another scarab. Uh, I can't remember what this one drops. Can you? Killing mist, I think. Frozen armament. You're wrong. Frozen armament. Chilling mists in the other part of this area. Then. You're losing your touch, bro. Hmm. <laughs> so, so. Here's another grace. Again, this is kind of the uh, the back side of Kerry Manor. But there's a little bit. So the, the the items in this area are really annoying. There's a bunch of uh, glove wart pick up that's scattered about the graveyard so just kind of pay attention to where it is that we are picking it up from because it's kind of hard to describe where it is because it's a graveyard so you can't really say it's next to the gravestone because it's there's fucking gravestones everywhere so i just keep a pen i'll point it out when we're going to pick up the next one here we are here pick it up here <laughs> all right edit and tony back again now i just wanted to mention the things that these skeleton guys can drop now the graveyard skeletons can essentially just drop the weapons that they're all wielding. So you've got the glaive ones, you've got the executioner great axe ones, there's only a few of them in the game. There's the skeletal bandits, which are the ones with the curved swords, and then there's the skeletal mages, and that's the ones that drop the scythe, which are these ones. Then there's the sword and shield skeletons, they can drop the sun realm shield. They don't drop the sword, and all of the skeletons in the game can all drop human bone shard. Yeah, so uh, there's, one there's just more. off to the left of the path before you get to those skeletons, one by those skeletons who are casting stuff at you. Something on uh, the top of this rock. Uh, Thorfrost bosses. Uh, Great, pointless. Yep. Um, <laughs> Literally. Uh, so now we are... So th th now this is down the rock, so kind of the opposite way from the rock pointing, and then there is a... This is actually a, one of the painting guys. So as you've it's got the, the painting we picked up where we got the um, Ancient Dragon prayer book from the single Lindell Knight here. Right. So we also picked up another glove wart there. And we also picked up all the Norix ashes. And also that the, the painting guy dropped as a larval deer. And there's another glove wart that we just picked up there. Aye, so I think there's one more. Yeah, there's one behind the... Uh... Not the Red Wolf of Radagon, but just some Red Wolf sitting in a field. So, picked up another um, Grave Glove Wart there. Um, this is definitely the most annoying place in the game to pick up Glove Warts. And now we're going to enter this Ever Jail, which I think might be the easiest one in the entire game. It's Old uh, Men in Underwear? Yes, and these guys are actually easier than an NPC, I think. Um... And we're just ass slam it to death. It's crazy the coverage that ass slam has in this fucking game. It is absolutely crazy what this fucking Ash of War can do. Because you might notice that see when this thing is on the ground, it isn't attacking you. <laughs> and there we go, it's dead. Best defense is a good offense. Just keep ass slamming it and it can't hurt you. So that was meteor, right? <clears throat> Don't, I don't uh, actually know if that's good or not. I've never used it. It's okay. Um, it's kind of a spectacle when you use it. I think it's too expensive for what it is. Um, plus, you get a stronger version of it way later in the game anyway. So, it's not worth so, going to the start right. for it. Grab Torrent, and then we're just going to grab this item, and we're just getting the fuck out of here, because fighting that Red Wolf, which drops nothing for the sake of a Golden Rune 3, is not a valuable trade-off. So, aye, God, those no. Red Wolves are some of the most annoying fucking enemies in the game. They will not... It was okay as a boss in Real Lucaria, right? Because it's not only that, it's confined to a fucking room. But in this case, it can just go anywhere. 
And uh, aye, we're not going to fight those things if we don't have to. Now, back to Loretta's boss room. And now there's a whole bunch of NPC shit that we now need to get out of the way because we're now going to do Rani's quest. We're going to start it anyway. And this is probably the biggest, most involved, mainest quest in the entire game that is linked to an ending. Uh, so, and a whole bunch of items and a whole uh, fucking uh, an area of the game as well. So, uh, you want to be doing this. On the way there, though, there's a scarab, which I should probably have just ass slammed. <sighs> this is chilling mist. This is annoying, is what it is. But okay, there we go. There's chilling mist. <laughs> I knew one was chilling mist and the other was frozen arm, but I couldn't remember which was which. I should have known because the other one was blue, which means it was a spell. So we are uh, this not... dragon, by the way, we're just not fighting it. Nah, we we do fight it Waste later on in a different area, but we're not fighting this now. Yeah, you can't actually kill it here, so just ignore it. If you do enough damage to it, it flies away. It takes its ball, it goes home. Yeah, it's basically um... just a big guard dog. But now the cool thing is you can ride torrent all the way through this thing, so we're just gonna grab the grace and then head up to the top, and that's where Rani is. Now there's a whole lot of going back and forth and talking to NPCs and yada yada, so I will try and speed up when relevant. So, we're quickly heading back to the round table hold for some reason. Talk to Roger about the uh, Knight of the Black Knives. He right, tells yes. you that it was Rani's doing. Now, I don't think this is technically required for anything, but just in case, I thought I would do it because it, um, it was mentioned in the guidebook. But aye, so now we're heading back to Rani's Rise, heading up the top, going to speak to Rani. Please tell me I sped this little bit up. Ugh, I didn't. <clears throat> Doesn't look like you did. <laughs> so how are so, you? How was your day? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, peachy. Um, it'd be better if we were walking up ten flights of stairs and watching a lift in slow motion. But no, here's Rani. Um, so, yeah, you speak to her. You, you pick the bigger dialogue option, basically. Um, you enter into her service. Then a little icon's going to appear at the side of your screen. Um, or not. Oh, uh, that's right, yeah. Because you spoke to, to Roger, me. she won't take you into her service. You've got to talk to him again, and then you can go into her, into her service. That's right. So maybe, actually, what you should do is not speak to Roger. <laughs> yeah. If anything, this just wastes time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I guess, uh, strictly speaking, this now will... If you have spoken to Roger for whatever fucking reason, this now will explain what is going on. So it covers that potential scenario. So it looks like I sped this one up. So good old me. Right, so now we can speak to her. I wish to serve you. Yada, yada, yada. Very well. Something, something destiny. Something, something hunting, I think. Uh, something, something Seleucus. Uh, so now I think we need to go and speak to all her cronies. Which yeah. is... So ugh. you've got that little icon at the side of your screen there. That means there's the passivity aura in this area so you can't swing your sword so you can't piss anyone off you have to come down here you speak to eg who we met earlier the blacksmith speak to blythe who we clicked our fingers at in the mistwood and this is the new npc syllabus he's another sorcery merchant and once you've spoken to them all you go back up to the tippy top you speak to rani the passivity field is lifted and you can finally warp out of this area if needs be we're not going to do that because we need to now go talk to syllabus for real we need to go talk to real syllabus and not ghost syllabus now, make sure when you're talking to the ghost versions, you exhaust their dialogue, make sure they're repeating themselves, because you don't want to have to go up and down that lift again, because Rani's like, speak to them again for me, will you? But right, uh, you could quickly jump out of that thing by jumping on Torrent and over that little balcony, which is a cool thing we discovered, but otherwise, aye, um, we're just going to go in this direction. That's generally southeast-ish to this rise here, and I think we're going to quickly grab, I think this is Blade's helm for his armor set? Yeah, the wolf. Oh, yes, I'm fucking good. I'm so good. <laughs> and then at the tippy top, I think, is a memory stone. I think so, I think so. Yeah, so this area, um, the three sisters, there's three rises. We've been to Brownie's rise, this is Celibus's rise. And the third one is Renna's rise, and we can't go in there yet because it's tied to the progression of Brownie's quest. But here's Celibus. So accept his task, he'll give you uh, the, a potion, and um, who is it to use the potion on, how is it, he asks? 
So he asks you to give the potion to Nefeli. Right, um, yes. Who's currently at the bottom of round table hold, crying her eyes out because her dad's a bastard. And it's me again. So I just want to quickly mention about Rani's quest. Now, you can do Rani's quest as early as part 21 in this guide, which is essentially no Nocron and Seal for Aqueduct. Hello, me again. Now, I just want to quickly mention something about Rani's quest and Seleuvis' quest. You can start and finish Rani's quest from about part 21 in this guide if you really wanted to. However, if you were to do it that early, it means failing Seleuvis' quest. Now, as we want to actually do Seleuvis' quest the proper best way, we actually can't finish Rani's quest until part 31. Leaving finishing Rani's quest until part 31, which is after the Shunning Grounds, means we can finish Seleuvis' quest by killing the Dung Eater instead of killing the Feli Lu. Of which, killing the Dung Eater has the least amount of impact on the game, and this way we can get as many items as possible in one singular run. Not only this, finishing Rani's quest by giving her the Finger Slayer Blade will kill Seleuvis, so that means we have to do Seleuvis' quest before finishing Rani's quest. So yeah, of all our options, doing it this way has the lowest amount of negative impact on the game. Not only this, even though we're killing Dung Eater, we can still get most of his stuff anyway, so no harm, no foul. Anyway, just thought I'd mention that. Back to the guide. Um, before we go do that, though, we're going to jump back onto the roof of Carrier Manor, get kicked off Torrent, because you can't use Torrent here. Um, Thankfully, you don't die Steadily make our way. <laughs> no, thank God. Um, steadily make our way down. Steadily make our way down. <laughs> Jesus, and, uh, okay. You no doubt saw the hole in the floor over there. Um, dropping down into that, you'll meet another NPC. This is Pidia. He's an Albanoric merchant, and he sells some pretty cool stuff. Um, a cookbook, a larval tier, celestial do. Um, and this is where you would have got one of the Albanoric weapons, which I think is the Ripple Blade? Uh, I guess mark? we will... Yep. Now, he also sells a pot and a cookbook, so we're going to buy them, because they're key items, I guess. And now this is where we can now go on to the final part of Kerry Amana Ramparts. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, if you drop down onto this bit, which is kind of hidden, I feel like it doesn't it doesn't seem... This kind of looks like a drop that would kill you. I mean, it would kill you in real life almost certainly, but... Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> otherwise, we can uh, drop down here and get a slumbering egg. I mean, do eggs slumber? I mean, I, I, mean I guess. What is being in an egg if not perma sleep? Um, speaking so, of sleep, this crab can inflict sleep. Um. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it was the crab that made the egg sleep, and it was actually a very much awake, a very a conscious egg in this crab. It was a it. lively egg before this crab got its claws on it. <laughs> and there's a stone, a stone sword key and um, crab eggs. So aye, that is, uh, that's it for round table hold. Now I do quickly want to mention when it comes to Seleuvis' quest, we are not going to be given his fucking potion to Nefeli. We're going to be given the potion to a guy called Dung Eater. So do not give the potion to Nefeli or Gideon Ofnir, who is the other cunt that you can give it to. Because giving it to Gideon does absolutely nothing. But otherwise, we're speaking to Roger. Then we're going back and uh, resting at the Grace. Now we're speaking to Roger, resting at the Grace. And if you do this, I think four times, uh, Roger is now officially dead, dropped his armor set and a letter and his bell bearing. And now you give the bell bearing to the Twin Maiden Husks and then that will sell Roger's stuff. And otherwise, that is it for this part. And okay, there we go. That's Kerry Manor. Done. Join us in part 15, where we're going to be doing Seal for a River. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.